Welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss templating options available to us in Express.js. First, we'll look at how to set up our template framework using the engine and set methods. We'll see how to set directory locations for reading the view files and other static content. Next, we'll take a look at a few of the more popular options such as Jade, EJS, Swig, and handlebars. Finally, we'll see what's involved in setting a project without templating for use with frameworks like Angular and React. For this video, we'll use the starter app template as our example. So if we open up our app.js file, right here we have defined and set our view engine as Jade. And the way that we're able to use our Jade files is that we define a string called views as our first parameter. And the second parameter tells our view engine where to look for to find our Jade files. So we can open up one of our Jade files. And Jade basically always extends a layout. And the layout is just going to include the scripts, such as style sheets or other scripts that have been included. Jade, as you can see, is just a very stripped down version of HTML. And its rendering is defined by spacing. So we can space our items by either a single space or a double space. It just has to be congruent all the way through our file. I'm personally not a big fan of Jade because if you don't have your spacing correct, then it tends to break what you see within the view. But it is the template that is shipped with Express, mostly because it was created by TJ Holowaychuk, who also created Express. Another view engine that's very easy to set up is EJS. So as you can see, it's the same as Jade as far as declaring our view engine, and then we just name it EJS. We typically declare where our views are going to be above. And in this instance, we're not, we don't have to use the path.join. So I've seen this used both ways. It seems that you can just define where your views are going to live, and that works. And other times I've seen developers use path.join, pass in the double underscore directory name, and views. You see this a lot more where we're defining express.static and then path.join to tell our engine where to look for in order to find files that we're going to be using for our projects such as the images and the CSS. So now we'll look at the EJS template, what it looks like. EJS, you can find a little bit more about EJS by obviously doing a Google search and this is one of the first results. Gives you a lot of good information about how to use EJS. Most of these templates have one major purpose and that's for looping through a collection of items and then displaying those items on the page. So you can see that being integrated into this EJS template that I opened up right here. So this would be looping through a number of books and then displaying the book's title, the book's author. Probably one of the main reasons why I don't like really to use EJS either is because there doesn't seem to be a Sublime Text plugin that works well. So I always get this kind of ugly looking colors and big red bar here whenever I'm loading up any EJS files.
Another templating engine that I do like to use a lot is Swig. So this is what Swig looks like. When using Swig and Handlebars, we do have to use the app.engine and this will basically define our extension. So because we could use different extensions for these templates, we have to define them. I really like using Swig because it allows us to loop through the data in a very easy to use syntax. So Swig is over here. And basically if we're looping through an array, it allows us to use this kind of syntax, which is slightly similar to what we saw in EJS. I prefer to use it because we're using the curly brackets in order to display our data, which is very Angular-like, and I like Angular. And otherwise, it's very simple. So it still has a fairly decent API of what you can actually display in your browser. So we can take a look at an example Swig file. And for this one, right up here at the top, I'm using some code in order to loop through bunny and bunnies. So if I have three bunnies in my database that have some information about each bunny, such as a member name, a date created, a title, a description, this will grab all the bunnies and loop through each one of them and display whatever it is that I want displayed. And this is the same syntax as you would find when using Angular. And all I have and all I have to do is use this to loop through them and use the end for to end the loop. And another very robust templating engine that we could use is handlebars. So handlebars would look something like this. And similar to Swig, we need to define our extension, and that's what this does. Some of the times you'll see HBS or handlebars, either one. And then we're setting our view engine to actually be handlebars right here. So handlebars allows us to use the curly brackets, similar to what we found in Swig. However, you do have a much more developed API with handlebars. So again, this is just kind of an example handlebars file. And this one, as you can see, the extension is HTML. So we can use handlebars as uh, HTML as well. And you can certainly find out more about handlebars just from their NPM and GitHub pages. So the options when using a view layer and node is you either use one of these templates that we just mentioned, or you don't really have to use any of these. So if you wanted to use a JavaScript framework like Angular, which just uses HTML, all you would have to do is use an express.static as we see right here, and then in the public folder, we would put our index file. So in our starter app file, we see a public folder. And basically, we wouldn't set up our engine. We would just include an index file. And then that would include our JavaScripts. And that would be another way of controlling what we see within our view.